In this video, we will go over two different implementations for certificate authentication with a FortiGate firewall uh, and Forty client using IPsec. So it'll help to have a little bit of certificate knowledge, such as understanding private keys, public keys, certificate authorities, the signing process. Um, also, I'm going to have a pre-configured IPsec dial-up configuration already uh, using a pre-shared key, just so that all we have to do is focus on converting it to certificate authentication only. And additionally, I'm going to have a pre-configured LDAP server uh, on the FortiGate already. I've linked some suggested videos just in case you need a refresher on any of these items. So to generate certificates, I'm going to be using uh, 40 Authenticator as the certificate authority. So you could use 40 Authenticator, you could use XCA, Microsoft CA, uh, Microsoft IIS, um, OpenSSL, but in my case, I'll use 40 Authenticator. Uh, so then we're going to have to pretty much sign a certificate for every single user, um, every single user machine, and then we'll have just one certificate for the, the server certificate that gets installed on the FortiGate firewall. Implementation number one um, will allow us to have the certificate verification being done on the FortiGate. Whereas implementation number two, the certificate verification is going to be done on the LDAP server. So as you can imagine, um, you might want to stick with implementation number two if you're looking for something a little bit more scalable. To start, let's create the certificates that we're going to need. So I've already gone ahead and created a, a certificate authority on the 40 Authenticator. It's under Certificate Management, Certificate Authorities, Local CAs. Uh, I named it TTP Fortinet, so I can just export that certificate to export the public key. Now let's create the certificate that's going to go on the 40 gate. So we go to End Entities, Users, and then let's create a certificate here. Now let's create a certificate for a user. So this would be the certificate that'll actually go on the 40 client machine. Okay, I'll just keep my certificates just very simple. Okay. And I'll, I'll just keep my certificates just very simple. Usually you'd be filling out more of that information, but uh, just for the purposes of this demo, uh, that's what we'll do. Now we'll want both the private key and the public key for both the, the certificate that goes on the 40 gate and for the certificates that are going to go on the 40 client machines. I've only created one here, but in your case, if you had 10 users in the organization, you'd create user cert one to 10 and so on. So um, let's just go over one example of how on the 40 authenticator, we export the key and the certificate. And then we have a passphrase, which is going to allow us to um, get the private and the public key in a PKCS12 file format. Perfect. And now I'll just go ahead and I'll do the same thing for user cert one. There we have it. So we have the CA certificate and this one needs to be placed on every end machine as well as on the FortiGate uh, because it needs to validate the full chain of the other entity. Uh, and then we'll have this certificate that will go on the 40 client machine as well as this one that will go on the FortiGate. On the FortiGate, under Feature Visibility, we're going to want to enable certificates if we haven't already. And then we'll go to the Certificate section. And we will import the CA certificate first. There we have it. Followed by importing the, as a local certificate, the PKCS12 certificate, which is the FortiGate certificate here, and we'll put in the password. And here's that imported certificate, the service certificate. Okay, so now let's go into the FortiGate and let's create a user peer which is going to one, it's going to reference this CA underscore cert underscore one, which is a CA certificate that we've imported. And two, it's also going to reference the user cert one certificate that we created on the 40 authenticator, right? We want to reference the, you know, in this case, we're going to reference the subject name to identify that certificate. And we'll just name it just to be consistent. It doesn't actually matter here, but we'll just to be consistent, let's just name it the same certificate, uh, same certificate name. So we'll go set CA. Okay, so that's where we're going to reference the CA cert here. And then we're also going to reference the subject name. And we'll just make that consistent with the certificate. 
cn equals user cert one. This is the value on the actual certificate that's going to be checked when authenticating to the FortiGate. Okay. Real quickly as a side note here, what this is going to do is it's going to create a new section under user and authentication. As you can see, we can't see that section right now. Uh, the only way to see it is to log out, uh, log back in, and now going forward, we're gonna see that section um, under user and authentication. Now we see that section PKI. So now we can actually add these, um, you know, add users and subject configurations via the GUI going forward. Now back to the CLI as we still do require it to configure our user peer group. And we'll just name this PKI users and we'll set the member as user cert one, which I created via the CLI, right? So then, you know, as we would have more users getting added, all we would do is we would do this in the CLI whenever the user gets added so that it gets dropped into that PKI users group. Okay, and I'll type end to save that configuration. So we'll just go, just to refresh here, show user peer. So the user, user cert one, is going to reside under show peer, or sh sorry, show user peer group. There we go. Okay, so now that we've done all of this uh, pre-configuration with um, user peers and importing the certificates, really the, the final step here is to go into our, our dial-up tunnel configuration. Um, you know, and what we'll do is we'll change the method from pre-shared key to signature and we're going to specify FortiGate cert, which is the server certificate for the FortiGate. Uh, and then we'll change the accept types from anything else to the peer certificate group. And then now we're going to define that peer certificate group that we created via the CLI. And then let's just make sure that, you know, XAuth is disabled, you know, and now the, the authentication is going to require that we match a user that's in the PKI users group, which in our case, that's going to be that user, user cert one, which we created via the CLI and specified the subject. Okay, now let's go on to our Windows machine that has 40 client installed, and then we'll install the certificate that uh, was created uh, for the user on 40 authenticator. And after you import it, you can check to see that it's in the personal store uh, by going to MMC. Adding a snap in. And there we have it, we have the user cert one. And if we click into that, again, we're going to see that the subject is CN equals user cert one. And additionally, we need to install the CA certificate. And we'll install it to the trusted root certificate authorities directory. Okay. And we can confirm that we successfully installed by going to our tr trusted root certificate authorities directory on the MMC console snap in and let's look for TTP Fortinet. There it is. Okay. Now here's my configuration on the 40 client machine. So we're referencing user cert one. We're using an X509 certificate uh, and then we don't have any type of X auth. Now let's go ahead and connect. And there we have it. Now we're successfully connected. Okay, so just a quick review to um, explain at least my understanding, which could be wrong, of, of the certificate placement. FortiGate Cert, which is the server certificate on the FortiGate, um, that is that needs to be validated by the client itself using the TTP Fortinet, which is placed under the trusted root certification authority section on the machine. And additionally, thinking in sort of, I guess, the opposite direction, we have a certificate that's in the personal store called 
user cert one and that's the one that we're referencing in the 40 client configuration that certificate when it's presented to the FortiGate when we're trying to bring up the IPsec tunnel, um, the FortiGate is going to check that certificate against the peer certificate group, which is named PKI users. So if we go config um, user peer group, and we look at what we had configured for PKI users, we see that the member is user cert one. So then if we go show user peer, then we can see that user cert one, it is associated with the CA certificate, CA cert one, which is our TTP Fortinet certificate authority. So um, that certificate user cert one has to have been signed by CA cert underscore one, which is, which is checking the chain, as well as checking the subject name that's part of the certificate. So that's how, um, and, you know, and it, and it must be the name user cert one if it's anything else then the authentication will not be successful let's quickly test that okay so we'll just change one character there and now we'll try to authenticate and it expectedly will fail all right, now let's go over implementation number two. So uh, where we're gonna be using our LDAP server. So the user John Smith, um, who has the UPN name of jsmith at fortinet.local. Uh, the UPN name stands for uh, user principal name. So we wanna ensure that the end user certificate has jsmith at fortinet.local um, specified on the certificate so that when the user authenticates, the FortiGate will check to make sure that the a user with that UPN um, specified on the certificate resides on the LDAP server. And again, it's going to ensure that that certificate was signed by our certificate authority. Uh, in this case, it's TTP Fortinet as the CA. Let's start by creating our certificate for John Smith. So this is the important item here, this user principal name being jsmith at fortinet.local. Now we will export the key and certificate, and then we will import it onto our 40 client Windows machine. Okay, same as before, we will install that certificate into the personal store on this machine. All right, now to the FortiGate, let's quickly review the pre-configured LDAP configuration that we have here. Uh, so the name of the server is Windows LDAP. So let's reference that LDAP server now. We need to do something similar to the previous example. We're gonna go to config user peer. Um, let's just create a new LDAP server here. And we'll go set CA, same as before. We'll have the same CA here but then we'll set the LDAP server to be that Windows LDAP. Here, I'll just go show, there we go. And then we'll set the LDAP mode to be principal name. There we go. So when a certificate is going to authenticate to the FortiGate and match this user peer configuration, then it's going to check the this Windows LDAP server with the principal name uh, that is defined on the certificate. Okay. Now we need to configure, same as before, we'll configure a peer group. We'll just name it LDAP group, I guess. And we'll set the member to be that LDAP server that we just created. Okay. Now the last thing that we need to do is go to our IPsec tunnel configuration and let's just make sure that that peer certificate group, it's not the PKI users, which is the implementation number one, it'll be LDAP group, which is our implementation number two with the LDAP server. 
For now, let's leave XAuth disabled. Now to our 40 client machine, real quick here, let's go over that certificate that we imported just uh, a couple minutes back. Okay, there we go. So we can see in the SAN or the subject alternative name, we have the principal name as jsmith at fortinet.local, so we're good there. And then now on our VPN configuration, now we need to change it to John Smith. And let's test. And it's successful. Now, up until now, we've been mainly just going over uh, certificate verification, certificate authentication. Um, but then, you know, what if we want to add in, uh, you know, additional factor of authentication? Um, that's when we can go back to using XAuth, which is what we're probably used to using for the most part. Um, you know, if I look right now at my XAuth options, I don't have a, an option for LDAP. So what I could do is, you know, going back to this LDAP server, Windows LDAP, I could create a new user group. Let's just call that, um, you know, Windows LDAP group. Um, and then we'll just specify that server. I'm not gonna put a group in, but you could put a group in there. And then if we go back to our IPsec tunnel here, let's specify auto server. We'll choose LDAP group. Okay, there we go. All right, back to our FortiGate. If we try and authenticate with just the certificate, it's expected to fail. So we'll just uh, disconnect here. We need to edit the connection and add XAuth authentication, and then additionally put in the correct username and password credentials that are gonna get checked against the LDAP server, as well as our correct certificate. And then now it should be successful. There we have it. All right, so in case you need some troubleshooting tools, I have a suggested video on uh, IPsec troubleshooting, uh, and that includes Diag Debug Application Ike minus uh, one. But additionally, we can do Diag Debug Application FN BAMD. So that's uh, F as in Foxtrot, N as in Nancy, B A M, um, D as in Delta. And then we can also go Diag Debug Enable to start the debug, and then you know, when we connect with our correct credentials. Now we're gonna have information both about IPsec due to the Ike command and uh, information about certificate authentication due to the FN band uh, debug that we have running there. So if you ever run into any issues, you know, start taking a look through the debugs and, and, and find it that way. All right, so that wraps things up for this video. Uh, thanks for joining in and we'll see you in the next one.